Hi, everybody. I'm Kim Kircher. We are going to be starting shortly. Uh, shout out to the movies. I always think that there's movies and songs that actually have great little phrases and things. So if you know which movie I'm referring to when I say, can I get five minutes on the clock, please? That's where we are. So we'll be starting just in a few minutes. And I always like to start at the beginning of the story. So while we're waiting for everybody to join in, we're going to go ahead and kind of get started. And I'll tell you a little bit about my career path today as, as part of what we're talking about. But really, uh, people usually start in college. I'm going to start before that, because when I grew up, I grew up in a family that really valued healthy eating, taking care of ourselves. And my mom grew up on a dairy farm and my dad had a grandpa that actually had a horse drawn milk route in Chicago, amongst other things. And so agriculture has really been a part of our family on both sides my whole life growing up and valuing the food that comes from agriculture, the work ethic that we have in agriculture and, and understanding what that means. Oh, hi, Dustin. Thanks for joining. Hi, Buildup. And so when you look at what's going on in the world and you look at what happens with learning all of that, it starts at an early age. And, and that really was true for me. So I'm looking forward to sharing more about that with you guys too. And I'll tell you, um, my grandparents had uh, gardens, my mom and dad had a garden, and I have a garden of sorts too. If you follow me on Facebook and Instagram, you've seen my pictures of my flowers and things. So um, it's a little bit of a different garden than growing fruits and vegetables. Uh, but if you've ever grown even just one tomato plant, you know what it's like if you forget to water it or up against the squirrels eating your tomatoes and things like that. So knowing just even in that small sense how hard it is or what a challenge it is to grow our food, when you've got agriculture in your mind, I think nutrition is just a great extension of that as a career. So personally and professionally, it's it's been of interest to me. So that's kind of my growing up story. And then the reason I got into dietetics, I will kind of save that uh, for when everybody gets on the phone, but it, it was a personal reason. And I actually put my website in the comments. It's kimkircher.com, two H's, two R's. And I shared a little bit about why I became a dietitian, because I think when you think about why we do what we do, there's always a really interesting story. So I'm going to thank Leah and build up again for the chance to share with you guys and tell you a little bit about mine. So we're coming up at uh, 11 o'clock Central, 12 Eastern. I will officially, officially start then. But I mentioned my website. It's kimkircher.com. You can get to all my platforms on there. I'm on Twitter. Same thing, Kim Kircher. I'm on Facebook. Uh, Kim Kircher RD is my professional page. I'm on Instagram, but I don't do a lot of dietitian stuff on there. I share more about my garden in that space. So um, hopefully you'll join and connect with me. And of course, of course, we have to talk about LinkedIn. So I'm on LinkedIn. I know that's one of the things that uh, we want to talk about. And Leah, thanks for that idea to share a little bit more about that. Uh, when we get into that, I'll explain how and why I became such a fan of it. Um, so I keep giving you teasers in these little five minutes that we've got together here. So we've got one minute left. I want to welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, happy Friday. It's the first one of September. And I know 2020 has been such, a, I'll use the word, interesting year for us. And so it's really fun to connect with you guys, and it's really fun to spend some time with you. I know we're all missing our in-person interactions, but what I appreciate about this is we get to learn from each other and share. And I keep looking at the comments because I will be watching that. And I will tell you too, if I miss something, I will go back after this is over and I will address anything that we don't get to in our half hour together today. So it is the top of the hour. I want to welcome you one more time and we'll officially get started. My name is Kim Kircher. I am a registered dietitian and thanks to Build Up and Leah for the chance to connect with you guys and tell you a little bit about my story. We all become dietitians for different reasons and I grew up in a household, as I mentioned in our, our five minutes previous to starting, that really valued healthy eating and nutrition and exercise and taking care of ourselves. So that was something that was always personally interesting. 
And then for me, really becoming a dietitian, my story really, really starts after high school. I was a college athlete because in high school I was an athlete. So um, I actually played basketball, volleyball, and I was in track. I threw shot and disc. And I'm sure you all think basketball was my favorite sport because I'm tall, but actually it was volleyball. And being an athlete, that was something that was really just an exciting part of high school for me. It was really about balance of physical and mental prowess, if you will. And after high school, I actually got really sick. I was a sick kid off and on, so healthy eating and taking care of myself was something that was important as a kid. And I will tell you, when I got sick, it really kind of pushed the pause button for me as a person because I was all set and signed up to go to school. And a lot of you probably don't know this, but genetics was my first major. And when I got sick, it just kind of made me really think about what was important to me and what I valued. And so my parents had both gotten their master's degrees at Eastern when my sister and I were in grade school. And so long story short, we went to Eastern. I talked to a career guidance counselor and I said, well, you know, I'm kind of into nutrition and fitness. I really think it's exciting and interesting. And he's like, oh, you want to be a dietitian. Okay. So I did some research and I looked into it and I thought, you know, this sounds pretty great. So I then changed majors and became a dietetics major. And I was always into the biological sciences, but as you all know, chemistry is our jam. So I actually have a chemistry minor and that worked out just fine. But I ended up at Eastern Illinois for a variety of reasons. And first of all, I so valued my conversation with that guidance from that counselor at the time. And uh, the campus was amazing. Work-life balance is important even as a student. They had a wonderful fitness center and it was state of the art at the time. And like I mentioned, I was an athlete in high school. Some of you probably don't know, I actually went to uh, College of Lake County and that's where I played basketball and volleyball and, and was involved in sports uh, first too, to get back and get healthy again. So I'm giving you guys a huge peek behind the curtain with all of that. But when I went to Eastern, and I got into that program. I loved it. I got my bachelor's and my master's from Eastern. And uh, there are people that you meet along the way, like that counselor who talked with me about my profession as it is now. And then when you start to look at the different professors that you have and how the different schools kind of express dietetics, if you will, and one of the things I loved about Eastern was its focus on education and practical application. And I think as dietitians, there's a lot of misunderstanding about our field. And one of the things that I loved about my program, and I'm sure that's true for other programs too, is that it was so much about, okay, here's the science, and then this is what it means to people, and this is how we need to be relevant to them. And we learned a lot about our audiences, about cultural relevancy, and really honoring where people came from and what food means to them from that perspective. And so when you put all of that together, it was just the most perfect fit for me from a program. And I had a lot of favorite professors there. And I don't know, Jody Horn, if you're out there watching, but I'm going to give you a special shout out because... Jody was a registered dietitian and she was one of my professors who then actually became my boss when I was a grad assistant. I was in dining services and she was my boss and we got to do all kinds of stuff in food service as you would imagine. So feeding the kids and the faculty, we did camps and conferences in the summertime. We did all kinds of educational programs. So I actually got my first part of presenting in college in grad school because I would present to college classes, I would do presentations in the residence halls, and I would start writing articles. We did brochures that were available in the dining halls. And then I also wrote articles for our parents of all of the students um, that went in the housing newsletter and went out to all of the, the parents for the students there. And it was through that process. And the reason I'm telling you that is because it became foundational for me as a professional, because I will always remember what Jody said to me. She said, when you are writing something or you're doing a presentation, yes, you have to appeal to as many people as you can, but you cannot lose sight of that individual. So I'll give you a diabetes example. 
if you write an article on diabetes, we all know that heart health and diabetes go hand in hand, right? We also know that oftentimes there's some renal involvement going on with diabetes. And so if you're writing a, a diabetes article, let's not forget that we've got people who may also have other underlying medical conditions happening at the same time. So when you think about that, how we write that article needs to be inclusive of everyone, but through that individual's lens. So let's not overpromise. Let's make sure that we don't speak in extremes and really think about what happens to that person who reads that article word for word and takes it in. So she really helped me shape my thinking and how I approach when I do all of the media that I do. And I did not know that I'd end up doing traditional and social media to the extent that I have. I'll get to that in a second. But because of that moment in my grad assistantship, because of her and our conversations, I learned how to think about what I'm doing from that end perspective. And that's something that we as dietitians do so well. We think about our audiences and we think about what it means to them. And health and wellness is personal. Food is personal. So having those moments where we can connect with people, even when it's through a screen like this or through the written word, those moments, we can make them come to life like I think nobody else can. Of course, I'm biased because I'm a dietitian too, but um, I share that with you because it was really important. The other point about college that I want to make, um, some of you may know the name Dr. Ruth Dow. She was actually my mentor there and she ran our program and she said some of the most wonderful things that I believe are true for our profession too. She said, there's not one path. What we can do with the skills that we have are incredible and it's really up to you how you express that. And so those of you who know me very well, I don't express my profession through the building that I walk into. So hospital dietitian, supermarket dietitian, clinical dietitian. We hear those words all the time and we know what we mean by that, but I prefer registered dietitian who works in because we all have the same training and we all have this amazing skill set that yes, we know food and nutrition, but our ability to translate science, our ability to connect with people and meet them where they are, inform their thinking, inspire them to try something new when they've been doing something their whole life, we do that so well. And so she would bring in guest speakers. It was the first time I had heard somebody who worked in sports and fitness. And so when I was in grad school, I always thought my career would be in the health and wellness space from a fitness perspective. So kind of leapfrogging out of college, my first job right out of grad school was actually in a hospital-based health and fitness center. I thought that was where I was gonna stay. I loved my job there and uh, we did all kinds of different stuff. We had clinical programs, so diabetes, osteoporosis, fibromyalgia at the time, cardiovascular, obviously weight management. And it was really a great opportunity because it was in a fitness center on the grounds of a hospital, which was a new idea at the time. This is dating me. It's the, the late 90s that I'm talking about. And it was a multidisciplinary team. So we had an exercise physiologist. We had a behavior specialist. We had a nutrition specialist, dietitian, me. We worked with a chef that we would bring in and we would do cooking classes. We worked with different doctors of different disciplines. So we really had a, a very diverse expertise that would bring these programs to life. And I loved it. I saw individual patients. We taught the classes. We worked with the hospital staff. We had the fitness staff. And it was really a prevention and management of chronic disease perspective. And it was awesome. So you think to yourself, well, why would you leave that? Well, because I wanted to be a certified diabetes educator. My grandpa had type two. It was something that was on my radar. And if you've ever gone to take that test, they are very particular in how many hours that you need, how many patients you need to see. And I simply wasn't having the hours, even though I developed our diabetes program, I had patients, it wasn't quite enough to meet their criteria. So when I started thinking about it, that's when I actually moved into Alexian Brothers and I worked as an outpatient dietitian. They wanted a CDE RD. They knew that I was pursuing that. So it was a great fit. 
and I loved that team. So shout out to my Alexian Brothers dietitians. I love them. They taught me a lot. And it was there that I actually got enough hours to finally sit and I passed the CDE exam. And for the past 20 years, I've held that credential. It's CDE, now CDCES. And actually, I'll start back a little bit. When I was at the fitness center, I got certified as a personal trainer. Even though we had exercise specialists, exercise physiologists, personal trainers, all of that group, it was really my feeling that I wanted to be credentialed in that as well. Fast forward to the hospital days, I really started focusing on my CDE. So I let my personal trainer lapse and focused on that. And that was for the past 20 years. And the reason I'm sharing that with you is because oftentimes we think to ourselves, what's my next goal? What do I wanna do? Why do I wanna do it? Well, for me, it started out personal, as I mentioned. And ideally it will lead to something else that you don't even know. And what happened for me was I actually got the job at Jewel Osco, my retail job with the number one retailer here in Chicago, because they wanted a master's trained CDE dietitian because they had a national diabetes program. So I'll get to that in a second. But so anyways, after 20 years, I'm going back and recertifying as a personal trainer, did that a little over a year ago. And I've made the decision to retire my CDE, CDCES after 2020. Um, so I can go back to my roots and, and get into the, the health and wellness space in particular. And I share that with you too, because we reach goals, but we always want to keep evolving. And we always want to think about like, what do I want to do now? Where do I want to go next? And it's okay to say, well, now I've done that. I'm really proud of it. And that's going to build a foundation for the next thing. And so when I was at the hospital, we did all kinds of great stuff there. And the dietitians there are amazing. I've kept in touch with them, not as nearly as much as I would like to, like we all are with people. But I share that with you because that team of dietitians said, well, why aren't you involved in the Dietetic Association? And so I said, okay. And so North Suburban was my home district. And in the state of Illinois, we have 10. And they were all actively involved, president, on the board, you name it. And so it was really through their encouragement that I became involved in that position there. And I share that with you because volunteer work is awesome, not only because number one, you meet all kinds of great friends, you get great life experience, but you also find new ways of operating. And so as the PR marketing chair, one of the things I did was look for jobs in our district. And that is actually how I found my job at Jewel Osco. Story for another day if you want all the details there. But volunteer work leads to amazing opportunities. And I ended up being president of North Suburban. And then I ended up being president of Illinois Dietetic Association, now Academy. And when I was president, I was at Jewel Osco at the time and transitioning. I was working with a recruiter to, to go into dairy. Um, but I shared this much detail about this part with you because volunteer work brings out things in you that you might not otherwise kind of pursue. And when you think about what happened, so when I was president of Illinois, we had licensure sunset happen. It's a process that happens for all the licensed professions here in the state of Illinois. And we had quite the opportunity of discussion and quite the situation on our hands. All of you are following what's going on across the nation with licensure. And I am so proud of our state. I am so proud of our team. Connie Bussard, if you're watching, big shout out to you. Um, there's so many people that were involved in that, but through that process, I was able to learn so much. And I'll thank the Academy. We worked with the DC office hand in hand. I will thank all of our district presidents, all 10 of them at the time, and all 3,500 of our dietitians, which brings me to, to LinkedIn. So how many of you, and I'm watching and I, I'm watching the comments here, but how many of you guys, when you think about our profession, find yourself explaining our profession all the time, even down to how we spell the word dietitian? Well, when you're working on licensure sunset, you find that you're working with lobbyists, legislators, opposition, people who are allies, so many people outside of our field. And those people are all on LinkedIn. 
And so it was at that time that LinkedIn became this amazing tool for me. So I'm going to spend some more time talking about that because that is a way that we can help explain our profession. So if you go on my LinkedIn profile, I use all the sections, the volunteer work, the certification part, the who am I part, obviously the job part. But if you have ever been frustrated that people don't know our profession, there are like a half a billion people. I think it's 690 million professionals worldwide on LinkedIn. There are 200 countries and territories involved. These are all stats I just pulled to be sure I was current for you guys a couple days ago. And there are 9 billion, with a B, content impressions and 15 times more content impressions than job searches on LinkedIn. Let that sink in. The reason LinkedIn is different to me in the digital space is because when you kind of think about what's happening in that space and when you kind of think about what's going on, there are so many moments that you can actually help to teach people without even realizing you're doing it. And if you don't have a blog, but you always thought about wanting to try one, LinkedIn now has a blogging tool. If you are sharing things or looking for content or you're looking for collaborators with different expertise from agriculture to business to you name it, you can connect with people in that space. And leading up to our time together today, I've spent some time putting some different articles about LinkedIn from different sources, LinkedIn itself, other things to talk about why and how to make your profile sing for lack of a better way to say it. So at the time of licensure, what I asked our executive committee for Illinois to do is go on there, pull from your job description, you don't have to make it up, but pull from your job description. And then we created like, what is Illinois Dietetic Association, now Illinois Academy, um, but what is our association? Who are we? We were about 3,500 dietitians at the time. Like I mentioned, 10 districts. We talked about our mission and vision. So I put all of that in my description of president of Illinois Dietetic Association, because I wanted the world to know who we are. I'm proud of my state. I'm proud of our profession nationally, globally. We do a lot of stuff that people have no idea and it's not their fault. We don't know all the details of somebody else's career either. And hi, everybody saying hi, I see you. And what year I graduated from high school, side note, I'm not telling. And so uh, when you start to think about everything that you find as a challenge to introducing our profession, to explaining our skill set to people, if you spend just a moment of time putting that information on LinkedIn, you are helping educate the world, literally, about our profession and why we can be so proud of what we can do and helping people understand what our profession is capable of. So I would strongly encourage you to do that. And it does take some time. I mean, you know, if you're not looking for a job, I get that you're like, oh, well, I don't need to spend my time doing that. I would encourage you. Yes, you do. Because it's one of those tools that it's always working for you. And there have been a couple of times in my career that I've worked with recruiters and they found me through LinkedIn when I wasn't even looking. And so that gets me actually, I was very, very proud to work for America's Dairy Farmers for five years. And a recruiter who happened to be a dietitian helped me through that process. So LinkedIn has been this amazing tool, not only to connect with opportunities, not only to connect to other people who might need our help and they don't even know they need us, but it's just a way to stay connected. And collaboration has been something for me that is everything because no one can know everything. Everyone's good at something. And our profession is so unique and we are here to help the public. And Leslie, I appreciate your comment who we're speaking to, never forget that. A hundred percent, yes, because that's what makes us special. We are in every food and nutrition conversation or should be. And the opportunities in our field from farm to table, literally, I've made those intentional career choices because I've been following what our audiences are telling us they wanna know. So I'll tell you a funny story. When I was at Jewel, that's when social media was invented. And 
I, at one point, it's a long story, but for our private brands, at one point, I was the only one manning the page. And people started asking me where our chickens lived, how far the dairies were from the store where they bought their milk. And so I was calling our sourcing team. I was calling all kinds of different people. I was finding stuff out about our packaging. And as I was in my almost 10th year or my, my eighth, it was probably my eighth year um, in the retail space. And I started seeing some of these conversations more consistently. You started to see that agriculture piece of health and wellness come into play. Well, we're not farmers unless we are. So shout out to the farmer dietitians that are out there, like my friend Charlotte and Jenny, and there's so many, but we're not all in that space. But what we are, are science-based and we know that our audiences want to know more about the farm part of the story. And the way to do that is to connect with farmers. And you know what makes an awesome pairing? A farmer and a dietitian, a farmer, a dietitian, and a chef. I mean, you think about the questions people have about their food right now. We can play in those spaces. We are the perfect partner for these other experts. And our part of the story, if you back in like, um, so shout out to Judy Barb when she was chair of FCP, she did a food waste session and I was able to be part of that and speak at FINCI about food waste. And when you think about what we do as professionals, if we're talking food budget, if we're talking portion control, and if we're talking about using everything you buy, food waste management, yes. Is that an agriculture conversation? Yes. Our scope of practice in that space is huge. And our time right now is everything in that conversation. And we don't need to be experts in soil health. We can find them. And you know what? LinkedIn can help us do that. We don't need to be experts in animal agriculture or crops. We can find experts on LinkedIn to help us with that. So there's this whole big part of thing uh, of our conversation that we can do that's incredibly important. So I'm going to kind of peek over and, and see. I've got some other questions coming in. So Dustin said, you mentioned your parents encouraging nutrition and exercise. What would they do to encourage physical fitness? We were active kids. They would take us out to play all the time. Our house back in the day was where all the kids came and my dad would like drive us around in this little cart in the lawnmower and then we'd play and run around and do all kinds of stuff. Um, making mud pies, like even little silly stuff like that as a child, bike riding, all of that kind of stuff. So we were just encouraged to be active all the time. Oh, Jonathan, I love you too. And I think when you, you think about everything that we do and you think about all of these different moments, I want to share a story because we've only, I can't believe it's, we have only got seven more minutes with you guys. So many more things to talk about. But for any dietitian to be, any dietitian RD to be, if you will, I want you to think about this. And even no matter where you are in your career, if there's something that you want to do, but it's scary, you have to say yes and try because the rest of us are out here to help you. And there's other experts out there to help you. And that was something that I always grew up. And I'm telling you that right now, because I'm looking at Leslie's comments about taking a ride on the freeway, many lanes, many directions. Don't say no before you get the question. Say yes to the opportunity. And what I mean by that is I actually had a group of interns one time and without giving away too many details, they were nervous about their um, rotations in the ICU and some of the more surgical settings, things like that. We were having this conversation and they because they didn't want to screw up. And I thought, what an incredible moment right there. Think about that moment. No matter where you are in your career, it's like, well, I don't know if I should try that. What if I mess it up? But what if you don't? And if you don't try it, you don't know if you're good at it. And if you don't try it, you don't know if you're going to like it. And that goes for media. We have this obligation to help spread the truth. And what I mean by that is accurate science, credible information, practical application of the stuff that the scientists know. Don't we do that so beautifully? Isn't that our jam? And when you think about how cool that is, media can do that for us. It, TV, radio, blogging, podcasts, wherever you are in that space. And I'm going to say LinkedIn again, just go write a blog. You could do it. 
but don't be afraid to try because if it's not your best option, you'll try again. You'll learn from it and you're going to prepare because that's what dietitians do. We like to prepare. We don't like to be bad at stuff and you're going to ask for help because I can't tell you how many of you I'm seeing your names. I can reach out to you. I can talk to you. I can say, can you help me with this? And you know what? If you get out there and somebody asks you to do something and you're like, you know what? I don't want to do that, but I know a dietitian who'd be perfect for that. We do that for each other so well. And I would continue to say, don't be afraid to try new things in your career. Where do I go next? Dustin, you're feeling that one at the moment. Yes, I love that. And focusing on what's next doesn't mean you can't live in the moment. This, this world that we're living in right now, Leah and I talk about this all the time. It's like, I always say my two favorite adjectives are weird and interesting. And sometimes that's good. And sometimes it's not. But right now, this moment is giving us all the opportunity to push pause and say, what is it that I've been doing that I've loved? What is it that I wish I could do, but I haven't done yet? And all of a sudden, there's all these new opportunities for us to try something new. And what you want to change your hair? Sometimes we're forced into those changes and it turns out awesome and we like it. And Maybe we want to try a new skill set. Maybe we're going to do some new online training. There's really cool stuff that we can do if we let ourselves and give ourselves the permission to try. And if there's something that you want to try, if there's something that I can help you with, if you've been inspired by anything that I've said today, reach out to me. You can text me. You can private message me. You can email, like whatever you want to do. All my contact information, easy through my website. You guys can private message me through messenger, whatever's easiest for you guys. Let me know if I can help you because if it's not me, I will figure something out because that's one of my favorite things to do is say, oh, you're working on this. I know somebody else who's working on this. Let's put you two together and let's just see what happens because there's so much work to be done. There's room for all of us and where we do our work, it doesn't matter. And I mean that in a good way, like wherever you choose to express the skills that you have, they're needed. And I'll leave you as we're coming up. We've got two more minutes together and I got to go through all of these questions. And I promise I'll get to them if we don't get to them because I've been talking too much about all this other stuff. Um, but people don't know what they don't know until they know that they don't know it. So we have to help people know what they don't know. We have to get people interested and curious, not scared and anxious. Let's get away from that. That does nothing for anyone. Let's get people happy. Let's people get people to say, oh, I didn't know that about food. Or, ooh, can you tell me more about that? Because isn't that the conversation we want to have? Like, isn't that why we're all out on social and traditional media? Isn't that what we're doing in one-on-one -on -one patient care where we're trying to say something to get someone to ask us a question back? That's just an awesome conversation. So help people get inspired whatever inspires you share it i see all of you guys doing that so beautifully on social media all the time and don't be afraid to try new things and if you're just not feeling it on one of the other platforms please look at some of the articles i've shared out i was on twitter if you want me to send them to you i will if you want me to post some of them here in the comments i can do that too but don't be afraid to try and be excited for the next thing. Be proud of what you've done and see what doors it opens for you when you look forward because there's so many things that we can do. And volunteer work does make a, a big difference in our life. I didn't even mention FCP. I was chair of FCP. I started out as a supermarket chair. I was the first ag chair there. So this is my moment to give my little shout out to the practice groups because if you wanna find your people, it's one of the best ways that you can do that. So. Thank you to everyone in my career who's helped me and taken a chance on me. Thank you to everyone who's asked me a question and let me ask you a question. I am so excited to spend time with you guys. I can't believe our time is up together. Thank you for everything that you're saying. And um, please reach out and please don't be a stranger. And I hope to see you all in person very, very soon. Thanks for joining today, you guys. Have a good weekend. And I, again, hope to see you all soon. And thank you, Leah, and thank you, Build Up, for the chance to do this today. Bye, everybody.